So, you're probably starting the Web Design Level 1 project, which is a basic web page. And you may be looking at this going, I have no idea where to start. Well, let me tell you what I would do for this. So this is my interpretation of how to get started on this project and kind of where to go and what to do with it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have the right software. Brackets is the software application that we recommend. So this is what it looks like, well, sort of similar. I've customized this to look a little bit different on my screen, which is, you can feel free to play with the settings on it if you want. But when you open brackets, typically you're going to see a default HTML document. And I do not recommend using this because it's got some good examples of how to create a list, how to use different types of HTML elements. There's an anchor element. There's an image element. There are other elements that you probably will want to use. Some of the stuff you want to copy from here might be the character set, might be a link to a style sheet, that kind of thing. But you're going to want to create your own blank document for this project. And that's easy enough to do. I'm going to just create a new document. I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to have to save it. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to name it. We're just going to call it, at this point, index.html. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And I'm going to click Save. Then I actually have something in here that I added to brackets, and that's an HTML template. You can use an HTML templates, or you can download and copy paste one. This is built into brackets, so I just select my HTML uh, format there, and it gives me the basic HTML structure that I want to start with. So then I can just go through and start adding things in, like I want to retitle my document. Yeah, you can call it something, whatever you want to call it. It should be probably logical, something that makes sense for the contents. The, the nice thing about using brackets is you'll notice everything is sort of color-coded. HTML elements are blue, attributes are green, attribute values are orange, and content is white. Uh, once I start adding a few more things in here, maybe I want to add a header. The other thing that you'll notice is you start seeing suggestions. I start typing something, it's going to say, well, you look like you're trying to do this. So then I can do is say, well, I don't have to type the whole thing. I can type, I can select it, I can hit enter. And the other beautiful thing is it will close items. If I've got a header open and I start typing the close element, it's going to say, oh, you've got a header, let's close it. Same with like uh, nav. So I create my nav element. I can close my nav, I can do, and I typically start by setting up a basic structure within my HTML body. That HTML body is the where you want all of your content to be. So anything that's visible on the page is considered content. And that will all go within body. And so here I have a header, a nav, which is my menu, a main content area, and a footer. And that's all within body. And the other cool thing about this is once I start adding things in here, it's so like maybe I want an H1 to, to find me. It'll start tabbing these embedded. So this H1 is inside of the header. Header is inside of body. So they're tabbed over to indicate parent-child relationships between the elements. So in the nav, maybe I want a list. I'm going to create a list, and then we're going to put an anchor within the list. href equals, uh, we're going to go to index.html, and it's going to start, you see, you'll notice I'm typing stuff in, and it starts suggesting things. We're going to call that home. Close anchor, close list, item, li is for list item. So I'm going to fast forward through the rest of building this. A lot of it is the same sort of things being repeated with different types of content or different file names or file structure or folder structure or whatever. Um, but this is 
basically where I put in the content for each page or for this particular page, I put in the links, I put in maybe if I have H2s or paragraphs or lists or images, anything that goes on the page as part of content, this is what I'm putting in. And you want to refer back to the specifications in the assignment to see what types of content you need to add. Some of it is not going to be prescribed very much in detail, and that's sort of left up to you to decide what that looks like. And then obviously when you create your own web page, your own website, everything on the site is going to be kind of up to you. You're not going to have a prescription of all. You need something in your header, you need something in your footer, you need this sort of content. That's really all up to you. There are some conventions that exist within web development community that say, you know, you need to have a header, you need to have a nav, a menu, you need to have a footer. But those are fairly loose. So once I've typed all of my content in, and I mean, you'll have more content than this, obviously, this is just a sample. But I want to make sure I save this. And then my preview options are pretty simple. I keep my browser open and I just basically open a new tab and I open a file. So file, open file. I go to my desktop, I grab my HTML index. And this is basically what it looks like. So what I do is I typically keep this tab open and every time I save the file, I can go back to the browser and just simply reload that tab. So I don't have to keep opening the file again so here I've added something, I've saved it, I've gone back to the browser and hit reload and it shows up and changes. Once I've finished all of this, I need to go through, I need to make sure that the HTML is valid and that validation process is done via the W3 markup service. Um, I can validate by putting in a URL if it's uploaded to a website. I haven't uploaded it, so I'm just going to validate by upload. So I go to choose my desktop HTML file. I tell it to check. It tells me there are no errors or warnings, which is what you want. If there are errors, it'll tell you what line they're on. Um, let me intentionally put an error in there and then try this again just to see what it does. So I put an error in, and then it gives me, this is what my problem is, attribute A not allowed on element image at this point. So it's going to give me line 12, which I can go back to my HTML document and look at line 12. That's where my error is. Sometimes it's right at the end of line 11, but it's usually either on the line or on the line above where it indicates in the error message. Column 9 to line 12, column 60, so it's this whole thing that's got a problem. And it tells me this attribute anchor not allowed. So I look through and I say, okay, where is attribute anchor? Well, here it is, or A, whatever that means. Um, here it is. So this tells me, okay, I need to come in here. I need to remove that. And I can go back in and I can revalidate because I fixed that error. And it gives me valid HTML. Um, so then I want to just make sure this checklist of things is done. So you have a name, about me, classes outside, after graduation, the title, site ID image, home button. Um, links should function. So these navigation links, they don't need to go anywhere. Like this HTML document doesn't exist. But the link should still work as though it did exist. So then my headline elements, paragraphs, and lists that correspond, all of that stuff, name it index.html, and then host it. So hosting is another issue and another thing we should consider. Hosting, what we'll do for hosting is use the create UNL site. So I'll open up a create UNL page. And if you haven't done this already, you'll need to get started and claim your HTML or your web um, site. You can create a, a URL for it and use your email address. Your, you, you have to use your UNL email to log in, your UNL ID. Once you've done that, there's a dashboard. I'll need to log in probably. No, nope, yep, there we go. There's a couple ways you can do your uploads. One is to use an FTP client like CyberDuck. 
which is something over here that connects between your computer and your file manager on the website. Right now, these are all the files that are in my HTML. So my public HTML folder, that's where all my website stuff is. So I would upload my document, this HTML document, to that website by just simply clicking Upload. It takes me to this page. I can go select my file. Obviously, I need both the index and the JPEG because those are po both part of this page. So I would select them one at a time and then upload them to the correct folder. I'm not going to do that because I already have an index in here that I don't want to overwrite. What I could do is create a new folder. I'll just call it um, screencast test. So once I've created a directory, I can put anything in there. So I will go back to upload. I will select index.html. I will then select my image. Those will upload. Then I'll go back to that. So here are the files that I just uploaded. What I can do is I can actually just go to my domain slash screencast test. That's the name of my directory. So if I do that, there's the page I created. Now this is exactly the same as this, except for the difference is here I have a web URL. This is online. This is live. Anyone could, can see it who knows what the address is. This is a local file. This is on my computer. This is not accessible. So if you turn something in using this type of URL, file, colon, whatever directories you have on your computer, your instructor cannot find or see that file. Um, and you'll probably either get a request to resubmit or just get a failing grade on it. So make sure that when you're turning it in, you've uploaded it and you submit the URL from the website. So it's going to be a domain at createunl.com and a file name or a folder name. It depends on what you're turning in. <clears throat> so here's another, um, uh, in here there's also a, uh, another tutorial about how to upload via the file manager. That's kind of what I just went over. So that's it um, for this particular video. Um, you know, be sure to ask questions of your lab instructor or, or your faculty instructor for your critique if you have other questions. Thanks for watching.